So while we've been talking a lot about the mounting tensions between Ukraine and Russia, we haven't really discussed the impact it's having back home on our turf. For example, the cost of oil. This as Americans have already been paying more at the pump and now oil prices continue to rise as Ukraine worries persist. Join me now, co-founder and chief strategist at GDP Advisors, Seth Denson. Seth, it's great to see you. So Seth, it's more bad news for drivers, right? Well, not just drivers, Stephanie, but effectively everybody, because it, whether you're driving on the road or whether you're buying goods and services, those goods and services were probably delivered from the road. And so this is a compounding inflation issue that means not only are your gas prices going up when you're filling up your tank, but probably those goods and services that you're buying, well, they're going to go up too. And still no word from the Biden administration on what the plan is to, to ease the price of gas and oil. And uh, I mean, have you heard anything yet? I mean, they, they completely no, ignore I, it. I'm sure Mayor Pete, I mean, Secretary Pete is on to it. Uh, no, listen, I, that's the problem. I mean, the Biden administration's continuous message is we're going to meet. We're going to meet with CEOs of big companies to talk about the pricing of their goods. OK, uh, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to try to meet with OPEC. Listen, the Biden administration, my understanding, is trying to meet with people like uh, the chancellor of Germany to talk. And they're like, nah, we'll pass. Uh, I think that's the problem. They want to meet, but they're not actually rolling out a plan that says, here's how we're going to get inflation under control. And here's how we're going to get oil prices under control or down so the gas prices can go down. The Biden administration has signaled that they are fine being reliant upon OPEC plus R. The R is Russia versus us having having homegrown oil and gas here. And uh, unfortunately, that plan is a bad one. And then I, I'm sure you've noticed the trend with consumer spending. Uh, that is down. That fell down in December uh, as the numbers are coming in. And uh, I would imagine that this trend would continue as we continue to deal with inflation. Yeah, I kind of, uh, you know, we, we all were talking about consumer spending and CPI and all of that uh, going back in confidence levels back in 20, end of 2021. And I kind of thought, hey, as we enter into 2022, reality is going to start setting in for some folks. They're going to start realizing that this inflation is not as transitory as we were told, that the only thing transitory is the money that's coming out of everybody's wallets, uh, and that those savings that people had amassed as a result of government programs, well, that was going to start to dwindle. And as such, the consumer would start to change their behavior. And it sounds like we're starting to see that now. And that could serve bad because one, one thing the Biden has been able to kind of tout as their economic policy is growth. Hey, we're still growing. Well, guess what? We may not be growing for long. And I hate to just do cover all bad news in this segment, but uh, <laughs> according, to, according to new reports, uh, the Super Bowl your parties could cost a lot more. They're saying about 14% more this year because of inflation. And that's going to hit a lot of different things when it comes to the supplies people need for their parties. Yeah, listen, this is what I get for taking a week off, Stephanie. You give me nothing but bad news to cover in the following week, right? Uh, no, uh, listen, uh, not only are my Dallas Cowboys not in the Super Bowl, uh, but I'm going to pay more for chicken wings if I can find them. Uh, and that's the other piece. We're talking about increased prices. We're not talking as much about the lack of those goods that I might want to buy. But, yeah, absolutely. Whether it's birthday parties, Super Bowl parties, or just eating, fill in the fridge. I'll tell you, I, did, uh, I volunteered to do the grocery shopping for Mrs. Denson last week. And so I went to the store and I got the tab and, and I looked at the guy and went, no, 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 uh, that, that, that can't be right. I, I just got that basket of goods. And he was like, that's right. And it was. And that's really sad because unfortunately many people are going to be able to sustain this much longer. Yeah. You think about how expensive things are and what it used to be like. And you have like a small little basket and it's like $150 worth of food, if not more, depending on where you are and what grocery stores you go to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it really is hurting the regular everyday American. They feel it the most. And those who are in charge, it's like they don't go to the grocery store. Biden doesn't. When, when do you think the last time Biden went to the grocery store? Serious question. When yeah, last I, time he filled up his gas tank? I'm going to go with uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> That's just a guess. I could be wrong, but he does ride the subway, right? But by the way, those tickets are going up too. You know, everything's going up. But yeah, I mean, listen, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the receipt and I'm looking at the everything going, okay, uh, let's see, college for the kids or uh, groceries this week? And, and sorry, kids, work hard, better get one of those scholarships because daddy had to buy groceries. And um, what can we expect from the housing market uh, as the Fed has signaled rate hikes? 
Well, listen, I mean, listen, the, I don't know that rate hikes are going to completely dismantle the housing market. As you know, Stephanie, we've talked about it a number of times. I mean, this housing market is on is on fire. I was just talking to a friend of mine, real estate agent here in Texas, uh, on a specific house that he was looking at for one of his buyers. They had 85 offers, 71, or I'm sorry, 81 of which were over the asking price. Uh, and this was not a, a mid-sized house. This was not a starter home. Uh, the Fed, by and large, because of their monetary policy, See, we had over 700,000 homes sold um, in an average price of about 453,000 in 2021, meaning that the Fed has bought all of those effectively through their monetary policy and hasn't changed anything. So them pulling back and raising interest rates is not going to slow everything a ton. Uh, that's still going to be on fire. But if you're out there trying to buy, you need to be ready. Your mortgage, those, those are going to go up very, very quickly. Yikes. Well, Seth, we're going to leave it here. Thank you so much. Good news today. Good news. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. Of course.